Hey everybody, time for another Chop Chop episode. On screen, we'll make a wrench karambit while I answer some of your questions posted in the comment section of the last Q&A video uh, in the audio. So look in the video description for information about the knife being made because the audio is just Q&A. Uh, no, I haven't found a wrench steel that fully hardens, so like my other wrench knives, this one is decorative. First question, Paracorder asks, how often do you forge? It depends on my work schedule, but at this time I probably average three times a week, even if some of the sessions are pretty short. I wish I could forge all day, every day. I'll get there sometime. Good question. So, Next, the Count of Monte Disco wants to know, what's the bare minimum equipment setup in your opinion? This is a super common question that probably deserves its own video at some point, but let's run through it very quickly. So, Safety is paramount first. Anyone who forges will tell you they've been burned. The question is how often and how badly. You want to wear full coverage wraparound goggles. Glasses won't cut it. I know from experience some folks wear a full face shield and that's probably best. You want clothes that cover your arms and legs. If you're standing directly in front of your forge, you need sunblock and UV sunglasses. If you spend any time looking into your forge, you've got to protect your eyes. Protect your hearing as well around anvils and loud equipment. Hearing loss is real. Tinnitus can ruin your life. I also know that from experience. So band saws and angle grinders can cut you very, very badly. If you're under 18, I'm obliged to say get adult supervision. All right, so now the good stuff. The most important piece of equipment, believe it or not, is something to hold your steel with while forging because you will be endlessly frustrated if your metal is bouncing around in and out of a pair of pliers every time you strike it. It hits the ground. You'll spend more time fishing it off the ground than you will hammering it. So. I've used $15 vice clamp pliers to start with, which work okay for a while. They wear out quickly. You essentially want tongs that specifically fit your starting material, whether that's 1-inch bar stock, 2-inch bar stock, 1-inch round stock. They make tongs for all this. Uh, if you have a welder, you can save some money or time making tongs by just welding a handle to all your work. All right, a 2.5 pound cross peen hammer is the place to start in my opinion. You need to forge next. The cheapest way is to make a brick lined hole in the ground and use a hair dryer for bellows. Wood is a decent fuel, burns quickly. You can also use charcoal. Uh, get a nice file or two to shape your work and sandpaper to apply a finish. But don't forget you have to some have something to cut your steel with like a hacksaw. Uh, I have to tell you, you're going to learn very quickly an appreciation for power tools. <laughs> so I would honestly just go ahead and buy an angle grinder with a metal cutoff disc if you're, if you're really serious about this. So, All right, that's great. What about anvils? That's a video unto themselves. The bottom line in my mind is if it costs you more than $5, be sure it's either a 40 pound plus piece of steel, a railroad track, or steel anvil, period. Anything else is a waste of money. The John Barrick wants to know how I got into bladesmithing. We started selling some high-end knives up at the shop and I developed this curiosity about knife making so I started making knives by stock removal using files and an angle grinder. Then I eventually bought a uh, 2x2 Grizzly belt grinder and eventually even a cheap forge and a cheap anvil so it's been an incredible journey. You guys should check out my first knife, huh? Yeah! Uh, coming a long way. So, next, uh, Gaduff and Stuff wants to know if I have other hobbies or jobs and if I ever back out of a project because it's too ambitious. I've been homebrewing beer with my father for about 12 years now. It's a really good hobby. Anyone interested uh, should check it out. You can make make it very simple. You can really wade into deep water, and it's a lot of fun. So uh, drinking your final product is a bonus, too. I haven't backed out of a project, but I've had many, many failures, especially with forge welding, and I've uh, attempted some decorative-type things uh, that really went south. Um, every once in a while, I get stuck on a knife, and, and it'll sit for several months before I pick it up again and push through to finish it. Pat Bartley asks if I do projects that aren't knives, such as jewelry or small sculpture. Not really, but it would be good for me to do so. It really broaden my horizons and I would learn some new techniques. I did make this rose for my wife uh, about a year ago. It's hammered out of sheet metal and there's a little bit of welding, but uh, taught me some things. So excellent point, Mr. Bartley. Make more and different stuff. Hatchet Jack asks, why a full quench instead of an edge quench? Edge quenching hardens the edge but not the spine or the handle of the knife which are left quote unquote soft or springy which lessens the vibration transmitted to the user and some steels edge quenching can leave a quench line similar to hormone which may not be desired cosmetically. In shallow hardening steels uh, edge quenching is probably not that much different than full quenching and some people feel like it even increases the chance of warping or micro fracture. So I'm not an expert. It's an interesting technique. I've only used it a few times. There's tons of to talk about with it and some people like it and some people hate it. Uh, it's a little bit controversial. A trapo bobbipple ball wants to know if there's a style of knife I like making more than others. 
Um, at the moment, I like these sort of rough finished knives with forged handles. Um, hammering hot metal is just where it's at for me. It's the most enjoyable part of knife making. So any excuse I get to forego hand sanding and hand finishing a knife or not having to futz with handles and guards is where is where I'm happiest for now. So, woo, that went fast, guys. We covered a lot of ground. Uh, check below for this knife's charity auction. Thanks for the awesome questions and keep them coming. And have a great one.